blood and marrow transplant discharge education class for patients, family, and caregivers. This video is intended for patients receiving a stem cell transplant at Moffitt Cancer Center, along with their family, friends, and any caregivers. This video gives a basic understanding of what is required and what to expect when discharged from the hospital after a stem cell transplant. There are two main types of stem cell transplants that patients can receive at Moffitt Cancer Center. These are called an autologous transplant and or an allogeneic transplant. An autologous transplant, which you may hear referred to as an auto, is when a patient receives their own healthy cells. An allogeneic transplant, which is often referred to as an allo, is when a patient receives cells from a donor. Autologous transplant patients, on average, discharge anywhere from day plus 10 to day plus 14 and require a caregiver up until day plus 30. An allogeneic or allo transplant patient, on average, can discharge anywhere from day plus 15 to day plus 21 and require a caregiver up until day plus 90 upon discharge. For example, if an autologous transplant patient is discharged on day plus 10, they need a caregiver for an estimated 20 days. If an allogeneic transplant patient is discharged on day plus 20, they need a caregiver for an estimated 70 days. These are average days. However, each patient is different, and there are several factors that the medical team takes into consideration. When the patient is discharged from the hospital, caregivers are required to be with the patient 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Caregivers have several roles and responsibilities as part of the care team that include, but are not limited to the following. Monitoring the patient's temperature, monitoring for any symptoms or side effects, helping manage medications, and of course, helping to prevent infections. Caregivers will also need to drive and come with patients to their appointments and do housekeeping and help prepare meals. It is important that caregivers also take care of themselves and ask for help when needed. If a caregiver gets sick or ill, they can no longer be a caregiver. We do not want anyone sick or anyone exposed to contagious disease near the patient. Remember, their new immune system is still growing. If the caregiver develops a fever, cough, runny nose, sore throat, nausea, vomiting, and or diarrhea, they need to contact a backup caregiver immediately. Stay away from the patient and wait for the backup caregiver to arrive. Once the backup caregiver arrives, the other caregiver needs to get medical attention to determine whether or not they can return. Caregivers and visitors must be symptom-free of any illness and or have a doctor's note in order to return as a caregiver. During the 30 and 90 day timeframes for our stem cell transplant patients, patients and their caregivers are required to stay within 30 minutes of Moffitt Cancer Center. Further distances need to be approved by the patient's primary blood and marrow transplant physician. Local lodging is available near Moffitt and is familiar with our patients. Our blood and marrow transplant social workers can assist with these arrangements if needed. The patient and caregiver should expect daily appointments for the first week in the BMT clinic or treatment center after discharge. The clinic and treatment center are located on the fourth floor of the Moffitt Cancer Center clinic building. Follow the gold valet signs. During the 30 and 90 day timeframes, the patient will be monitored by their primary BMT doctor and team until they decide it is time for the patient to be discharged home or away from local lodging. 
and less frequent appointments to Moffitt. Before discharge, a pharmacist will meet with the patient and primary caregiver to go over their medications and will provide them a medication list. When coming to these appointments after discharge in either the clinic or treatment center, it is important that the patient bring their current medication list and any prescription bottles. We want to make sure the patient has their medication available if appointments run later than expected. The medication list is important, and if any medications are changed at any appointment, an updated list should be obtained prior to leaving for that day. Also, the patient must get permission to take medication that is not on this list. This includes over-the-counter medicine, herbal supplements, vitamins, and more. During the 30 and 90 days, patients are expected to check their temperature twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. If a patient's temperature reaches 100.4 or higher, they should report this to the medical team. We will discuss shortly how to contact the medical team. Patients are also expected to wear sunscreen, SPF 30 or greater every day, to report any skin changes or rashes to the medical team. Shower daily using liquid soap, protect the central line in the shower, and make sure to use a clean towel and washcloth daily. Patients should change their clothes daily and also practice good oral hygiene. Patients need to get permission from their doctor to resume the following activities. To resume driving, to do any housekeeping, to take any over-the-counter medicine if it is not on that patient's current medication list, to drink alcohol, to go back to work or school, to stop wearing a mask in public places, to attend social events, and to start traveling again. After transplant, patients are at high risk for infection until the immune system recovers. The body does not have all the tools it needs to fight infection on its own. Therefore, it is important that the patient, family, friends, and caregivers keep infection prevention as a top priority. The number one way to prevent infection is hand washing. Anyone meeting with the patient should be washing their hands. Anyone that enters the BMT clinic or treatment center are required to wash their hands or sanitize at the door before entering and leaving each time. Hand washing should occur before, during, and after preparing food, before eating, before or after treating a cut or wound, after going to the bathroom, blowing their nose, coughing or sneezing. It should also occur after touching or feeding an animal, handling pet food or treats, taking out the garbage, and much more. Technically, there are two ways to wash our hands. First is soap and water, and second is hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is great to keep in the car, purse, end table, anywhere. However, soap and water is required to be used after you use the bathroom, or if your hands are visibly dirty or sticky and greasy. When in doubt, just wash your hands. It is important that patients avoid crowds and handshaking. All patients will be required to wear a mask when in public places, including to coming to Moffitt Cancer Center for their follow-up appointments. And remember, no sick visitors are allowed and notify the doctor if the patient has been exposed to anyone with any flu-like symptoms. Patients should also avoid contact with human or animal feces, no changing diapers, no cleaning the litter box, and or cleaning out a fish tank. Avoid contact with animals like birds, reptiles, rodents. Patients need to avoid zoos, petting zoos, farms, and barns. And patients will also need to avoid contact with soil, lawn waste, grass, compost, so no gardening or mowing during this time. No hunting, horseback riding, fishing, and or swimming. And patients should avoid construction sites, carpentry, handling of chemicals, and any illicit drugs or herbals. 
Patients should also use caution with pets. As previously mentioned, patients should not clean up after the pets, so no cleaning the litter box, for example. Patients should limit pet exposure to face, such as licking. If this happens, patients should wash their face right away with soap and water. Pets should not sleep in the patient's bed, and patients should be washing their hands after feeding pets, handling pet treats, and or petting a pet. For any pet-related injuries, such as a scratch or bite, the patient should wash the area with soap and water and let the medical team know if there are any openings in the skin. Another important aspect of infection control and prevention is cleaning. The patient is not allowed to do any housekeeping and should avoid being in the room while it is being cleaned. Caregivers can minimize exposure to dust and fumes by dusting with a damp cloth and not cleaning when the patient is in the room. The eating area and bathroom need to be cleaned daily, floors vacuumed and mopped weekly, and the sheets and pillowcases should be also be changed weekly. Food safety is another way to prevent infection and protect the patient from bacteria and foods that could be harmful when their immune system is decreased. Four steps to food safety. Number one is clean. Make sure everyone is washing their hands, washing produce, washing utensils, and cutting boards before and after use, and washing or cleaning the top of canned goods before opening. Number two, make sure to separate food. Keep raw meat, poultry, seafood, and eggs separate from other foods. Use one cutting board for raw foods, and another for cooked foods. Number three, cook to safe temperatures. Use a food thermometer to measure the internal temperature of all meats. No sushi or rare steak are allowed during this time. And number four, chill and refrigerate meats, eggs, or any perishable items after purchased and or after cooking within a maximum of two hours. Patients may continue to experience symptoms of transplant after discharge while their new immune system continues to recover. If the patient has a medical emergency, please call 911. For other questions or to report symptoms the patient is experiencing, please call the BMT clinic at 813-745-7208. This number is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is always important to call first and speak with the medical team to get further instructions. At night, if unable to reach the clinical team calling the clinic, the Moffitt operator is also available at 813-745-4673. Please identify yourself as a BMT patient and ask to speak to the clinical leader on 3 West. Thank you for watching our video today on BMT Discharge Education at Moffitt Cancer Center. This video is not a substitute for required scheduled classes for patients and or caregivers. The content is not intended to be medical advice and the viewers should consult their physicians should they have any questions. Viewers should not rely on information contained in this presentation for immediate or urgent medical needs. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your physician, go to the nearest emergency department, or call 911 immediately. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking care because of information contained in this presentation.